Hello class, today we're going to cover one or in this video we're going to cover 1.7 and so in this section we're going to start getting into what are called inequalities. Now in 1.7 it's just linear inequalities, eventually we will get to quadratic inequalities and then general polynomial inequalities, okay. Um, but for this section we're just going to start off with the basic concepts of inequalities. So the introduction here is we have been using this symbol before, and in the, using that symbol, you create what's called an equation, right? But commonly, we also use the other symbols like less than, less than or equal, greater than, and greater than or equal to compare two numbers together, okay? Um, for instance, the inequality x is greater than or equal to three means all the real numbers x that are bigger than three or equal to three, okay? So now that we um, have been working with solving equations, now we're gonna expand our information to working with inequalities, okay? So they're like equations, but instead of equals in the middle, you have one of these inequality symbols, okay? Um, and you'll even have some what are called combined inequalities where you basically are saying that this expression is between negative three and three. The expression is bigger than this negative three or equal, but it's also smaller than the positive three, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and talk about how the introduction of um, inequalities. So within an equation, as with an equation, you can solve inequalities in a variable by finding all the values for x or which the inequality is true. That is exactly how we solve um, equations. We solve the equation using our algebraic techniques, and then we try to decide whether or not those solutions make the statement true or not, okay? And it's the same thing here. We'll solve using our normal way of solving, and then we'll collect a, um, all of the values that meet that criteria, okay? So it won't be just one value. Um, it'll probably be an infinite number of values, okay? So um, for instance, if you look at the inequality, x plus one is less than four. If I were to solve this using my typical algebra techniques, I would get that x is less than three, which means all numbers that are less than three would satisfy this original inequality, okay? For example, if I just pick a random number less than three, like zero, and if I were to plug zero in here, I would have the statement zero plus one, which is one, is less than four, and that is true, okay? If I pick another random number less than three, maybe say negative five, and I do negative five plus one, that would give me negative four. And is negative four less than four? Yes, okay. So all values for X that are less than three will make this statement true, okay? And that's essentially what you're looking for is all of those values that will make that statement true. Um, so just so that we have, um, an understanding, here is, and I know it's really blurry and I'm trying my hardest to get this so that you can see it. So let me fix my focus a little bit better. There we go. I know it's not the best, um, but it is what I have to work with. So I'll try to emphasize some of this stuff in this chart, okay? Um, when you're graphing an inequality, it is going to pair up to an image. And so I have basically all the different symbols that you would see here. So I'm gonna do it in pink, but a little bit larger. Here is X greater than a number A. Here X is less than the number A. Here X is greater than or equal to that number A. Here X is less than or equal to that number A. Here, X is between A and B with two less than symbols. Here you have A less than or equal to X less than B. 
And here you have a less than x less than or equal to b. And then here you have the greater less than or equals on both the a and the b, okay? Now, the one thing that you'll need to recognize is that these symbols correspond to parentheses. So these symbols. Um, and then the ones where you have the inequalities with the equal bar, those correspond to brackets, which look like this. They're a little bit more squared off, okay? So when you're going to put this into what we call interval notation, remember this is all X is bigger than A. So essentially what that means is numbers starting from A or not including A, they just start at A, like right after A, all the way to infinity, okay? Whereas here, when you have S, X is less than A, it would be all the numbers from negative infinity to A. Basically, are you talking about numbers to the right of A? Or are you talking about numbers to the left of A? Okay. And then this is just the statement in words, X is greater than A. And here, X is less than A. So they're just putting in words, all of these statements, okay? Now here you have an equal bar. So the number could be A. And to denote that, what we do is we put a bracket next to A. So not only is it numbers all to the right of A, but it's also A itself, okay? And so what that looks like on the number line is a bracket and then the arrow going that way to the right. Here, X is less than or equal to A which means I have all the numbers to the left of A, but I also include the number A itself, whatever that number is. Now here, it literally visually says X is between A and B. So when you graph it, you are going to shade between A and B. And then depending on these symbols, if there's no bar, you'll lose a parentheses and no bar again, you'll use a parentheses, okay? And so in interval notation, it's basically parentheses, A, B, and then close the parentheses. When you're using the arrows, if it's going to the right, it's going to positive infinity. And if the arrow is going to the left, it's going to negative infinity, okay? So I'm just gonna put that here for these. So it starts at negative infinity because of that arrow, but it stops here at A. And that's what the interval represents. It goes all the way to negative infinity, but it stops at A. Now here it's the same thing. So notice that my X is in between A and B. So I will shade in between A and B, but this one has a bar, which means it will have a bracket and B does not have a bar, which means it will have a parentheses. So when I go to put it in intervals, it'll be bracket A on the left and then B parentheses on the right. And you do always write your intervals from the leftmost value to the rightmost value. Um, here, there is no bar on A, so it's a parentheses. And there is a bar on B, so there's a bracket. And then you're going to shade in between. In interval notation, it's going to be parentheses A, comma, B, and then the bracket. And then finally, for the last one, you've got bars on both, which means you will have brackets on both, and you are shading in between. So you have bracket A, B, and then close the bracket, okay? And then these are just stating that this is X is greater than or equal to A. This statement is saying X is less than or equal to A. This statement is saying X is strictly between A and B. Strictly meaning it cannot be itself A or B. This one says X is between A and B, but it includes A. This one says X is between A and B, but it includes B. And then this one says X is between A and B, but it includes both A and B, okay? So here we have an example. And this is something that you might see in the homework. And it says write an inequality to represent each interval. And so notice here that you're basically talking about the numbers, right? From negative three to five, here you have a parentheses and here you have a bracket and it would be everything in between, okay? 
When you have that kind of situation, what you're saying is that X is in between negative three and five. And when you have this, I call it like a double inequality, it's going to have two symbols. The symbols always need to be less than. They do not make any sense if you put a greater than in there, okay? They both need to be less than, but then you just need to pay attention to these symbols to know whether or not any of these are gonna have a bar. Parentheses do not have a bar. Brackets do have a bar. And so there would be a bar right there. Now for this one, I'm gonna do in a different color. So if I were to draw this one on the map, on a number line, here you have negative three and then positive infinity is going in that direction. So there's a parentheses on negative three and then it's going forever in this direction, okay? So that means that we're talking about to the right and when you're talking about to the right, it means X is bigger than this negative three. And then I have to decide, should I put a bar here or not? Since this is a parentheses at negative three, I will use no bar, okay? And this is a typo. There should not ever, 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 just FYI, your infinity or negative infinity will never have a bracket. It will always be a parentheses. So there's a big typo right there, okay? That should be a parentheses. Let me actually do it using my black ink. So it is a parentheses, just like this side. Okay, now for the next one, you have zero, two. So that means if I mark zero and I mark two, I will have a bracket on this side going in this direction and a bracket on this side going in that direction and I would shade everything in between. So X is obviously between zero and two. Again, always the less than symbols, but this time both of the numbers have brackets, which means both of those symbols will have the equal bar. And then the last one is a number line from negative infinity all the way to infinity, everything in between, okay? In that case, if it's all the numbers, then you're just gonna say um, X is all real numbers. Now this information where it says, then state whether the interval is bounded or unbounded, okay? If there is an infinity anywhere in the interval, it is considered unbounded. If there is no infinity anywhere in the interval, these are all the intervals, then it is considered unbounded, uh, okay? So since this one does not have any infinities, this one would be considered bounded. This one does have an infinity, so it's considered unbounded. This one does not have an infinity, so it is considered bounded. And then this one has two infinities, so it's certainly unbounded. It's unbounded in both directions, not just one direction, okay? So I hope that helps with those kinds of um, problems that you'll see on your um, oh, the solutions are back here. Oops. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Oh, and there's that typo again. It should be a parentheses. Okay. So the properties of inequalities. So the procedures for solving linear inequalities in one variable are very much like those same procedures that you use for solving just regular linear equations, okay? To isolate a variable, you may make use of properties of inequalities, and these properties are similar to the properties of equality, okay? But there are two important exceptions, okay? And those exceptions are when you multiply or divide by a negative number, okay? If you do, in fact, multiply or divide by a negative number, what's going to happen is that you're basically switching the inequality symbol. The whole number line is flopping over when you throw in negatives. Um, and so you, the inequality symbol will have to reverse. It will have to flip to the other side. So if it was a less than, then it's going to switch and become a greater than. And if it was a greater than symbol, it'll switch and it'll become a less than. Okay. 
So here's an example. If you have the statement negative two is less than five, and you wanna multiply both sides of this inequality by a negative three, that's fine. This will become positive six and this will become negative 15. But in order to keep that statement true, notice that the symbol needs to flip over because if I kept a less than symbol, six is not less than negative 15. But if you flip the symbol over in the same step, which you multiply by negatives or divide by negatives, um, you do get a true um, statement. Okay. So the same thing here, I think I did one like this when I had x plus one less than four. I can go ahead and minus two and I get that x is less than three. Okay. Now I did not multiply or divide by a negative, so I do not need to be flipping that symbol in the middle over. Okay. So here's the properties. The first property is the transitive property, meaning if A is less than B and B is less than C, then it makes sense that A would also be less than C, right? If B is the big guy according to him, but C is the big guy according to his big guy, then this guy is certainly gonna be big to the small guy, okay? And the same way, um, this one's a little bit harder. So if you know that A is less than B and C is less than D, then you could basically do an operation with these two and you know it'll be less than the operation that you do with those two. Okay, now here's the addition of a constant. So if you have an inequality, you can add any constant you want, whether it be positive or negative, um, just as long as you do it on both sides, okay? Now you can also multiply by anything you want or divide by anything you want. But if you're using a positive number when you multiply or divide, the inequality symbol will stay exactly the same. Notice A less than B, I wouldn't multiply both sides by C and it's still less than. However, if I multiply by a negative number, C less than zero means that C is negative. Then when I multiply C and C over here, notice that the symbol will switch from a less than to a greater than because that multiplying by that negative reverses the whole number line, okay? So be very, very careful there. Um, and then all of those same properties are true even for the greater than or equal or less than or equal to. So I, all those properties only had this symbol, but they can be extended to uh, having a bar, okay? So let's go ahead and look at this. It says the simplest type of inequality is the linear inequality, okay? That's why we're starting off with that in this section. When we get to 1.8, A will extend it beyond linears, okay? Um, so if you have this, it's actually linear because there's no exponents or radicals or anything crazy um, going on there. Now. If you have an example like this and they ask you to solve this inequality, you have to really pretend like that is an equal sign. So remember, it's just like solving an equation. And when you solve an equation, the first thing you wanna do is get all of your X's to one side. And so when I do that, I end up with two X minus seven and then greater than nine. And then I wanna get all my constants to the other side. So I'm gonna add seven and add seven, and then I will get two X by itself greater than 16. Then I will divide by two. And since I'm dividing by a positive number, notice that the symbol stays exactly the same, okay? That will get rid of the two, leaving me with just X and 16 divided by two is eight, okay? The symbol does not flip over because I did not divide by a negative. Okay, and then if I wanted to draw that on a number line, here's eight, the number that I got, and it's saying X is greater than eight, which means it would be all the way over here. And since there's no bar right there, it would be a parentheses here. And we know what's in this direction, it's positive infinity, right? And in this direction is negative infinity. But this is my shaded part. 
So how do I write that in the interval? It would be the parentheses a all the way to positive infinity and infinities always have parentheses. Never will they have a bracket. And why? Because you can't include. Remember the bracket means it's included. You can't include infinity because it's not an actual number. It's just telling you where it's going. It doesn't tell you what it is, okay? So, um, and then they just graphed it over here. So from eight all the way on, right? And then they got the interval. So sometimes it is possible um, to write two inequalities as a double inequality, okay? So instead of having negative four is less than or equal to five X minus two, and then this statement five X minus two is less than seven, they can combine them just by putting the five X minus two in the middle and these symbols still opening or pointing to the same guy, okay? So here it was pointing to the negative four and open to the five X minus two. That's exactly what's happening down here. And then over here, it was pointing to the five X minus two, but open toward the seven. And that's the exact same thing that's happening down here. So as long as you're keeping the statement the same, you can combine those two together, okay? And then combining them like that actually lets you solve it. So it's like, instead of you doing whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Here, it's whatever you do to one side, you have to do to all three sides because you have two fences now. And so you have three pieces. So I always like to cover one and look and see what do I need to do to solve this inequality? I know the first thing I would need to do is add two. I just have to remember to add two over here as well. And then that would leave me with um, negative two less than or equal to five X. That's gone now, less than or equal to nine. What would I do next? I would divide by five. And because I'm dividing by a positive, I do not need to flip the symbols. But the fives would cancel and I'd get X and then nine fifths. And so then this is the solution to the inequality. And since X is in between those, your graph would be negative two fifths, positive nine fifths, you're shaded in between. This side has a bracket, this side does not. So it's a parentheses. And so then your interval would be bracket negative two fifths and then nine fifths with the parentheses, okay? So this is the um, solution expression or inequality. This is the solution graph. And this is the solution interval. And so keep in mind that they will ask you for one, two, or all three of these pieces when it comes to your solutions, okay? Now, we will practice some more of this um, when we get to the practice, and especially when you get to the homework. But we're also going to extend this idea to absolute value inequalities. And so depending on what you have, whether you have less than, less than or equal, greater, greater than or equal, you will apply this rule. So when you have an expression in here and a number there, you will turn it into a double inequality. And even if it has a bar, it still turns into a double inequality just with two bars. If you have greater, it turns into two separate equations. And when you have the greater than or equal, it's the same equations, it's just they have bars because the original had bars, okay? So we will use that in a little bit. Um, so here's an example. It says solve each inequality and then graph the solution set. So here we have this, and they told us that if we had this situation where we have less than, then it's gonna turn into a triple inequality. This will go in the middle without the bars. This will stay exactly the same on the right. And then on the left-hand side, you still keep the less hand symbol, but you do change the sign to a negative. And then you solve this. Looking at that, I would have to add five to all three pieces. So they add five on the left, they add five in the middle, and then they add five to the right. On the left, you get positive three, 
In the middle, these cancel, giving you just x. And over here on the right, you get 7, OK? And since they want us to graph that, um, we would come down here, and x would be between 3 and 7. And since both have no bar, it would be parentheses and parentheses, OK? And so this is the graph of the solution. And then if you wanted to write it in interval notation, it would be parentheses, 3, and then 7 parentheses. OK, now if we're solving one like this with a greater than symbol, and notice it has a bars. For the greater than symbol, you're going to take what's inside the bars by itself and by itself. And then you're going to keep these symbols exactly the way they are on one of the equations. So notice it still says greater than or equal to 7. But then you're going to flip and change. You're going to change and change. So this is going to flip over. And this is going to change from positive to negative. OK, once you have the both of these equations set up or inequality set up, you're going to solve both of them. So here you would have the minus three on both sides, getting x less than or equal to negative 10. Here you would have to minus three on both sides, getting x is greater than or equal to four. Now, it does say the word or. So when you graph these things, So when you graph them, whenever it says the word or, it means you're going to take what is called a union, OK? So it means that you're basically going to combine the two sets together on one graph, OK? So the statement that x is less than or equal to negative 10, and then or x is greater than or equal to 4, this means from 10 and everything less than it all the way with the arrow to negative infinity. And since it has a bar, it would have a bracket. This statement says x is greater than or equal to 4. So that would be everything bigger than 4 going to positive infinity. And because of the bar, it will have a bracket. OK. Um, now, if I wanted to put my answer into intervals, I would have to write my interval solution it would be negative infinity to 10, negative 10. And then to tell the reader that uh, this part is also part of my answer, you would have to have that union and then four to infinity, okay? So key thing is when you see the word or in between two statements, you know you need to use the union. When you see the word and in between, you need to use what's called the intersection. And the intersection is just what they have in common. So a union is what both statements have together. Together's just together. And the intersection, so this is union, this one's intersection. This is only what both statements have in common. So it wouldn't be everything. It would only be what they have in common. But we haven't gotten to a problem that had the word and, OK? So let's go ahead and extend this inequality information to real life examples. So here it says, consider the two cell phone plans shown in figure 1.15. Plan A charges 49.99 per month for 500 minutes plus 50 or plus 40 cents for each additional minute. Whereas plan B only charges 45.99 per month for 500 minutes, but then they charge 45 cents for each um, additional minute. So the question is, is how many additional minutes must you use in one month for plan B to cost more than plan A? And so then how do you figure out what plan B is? Because the question was, is how many minutes do you do for plan B to cost more than plan A? OK, 
So then this is what I'm trying to establish, but I need to figure out how do I figure out the cost for plan B? I know that it's 45 cents per minute, right? M being the number of minutes. So M equals the number of minutes. And then um, whereas plan A plus the 45.99 for plan B, whereas plan A is only 40 cents per minute, but the straight up cost of 49.99. So if I wanted to solve this, what would I do? I would have to minus my 0.40 M over. And then I would have to get this constant over there. So I would have to subtract 45.99. And so then here, I would end up with 0 0.05 M. And over here, 49.99 minus 45.99 is just four. And then eventually I would divide by this number, which is a positive. So the symbol does not flip over. And four divided by 0 0.05 happens to be 80. So plan B will cost more when I use 80 additional minutes in one month, okay? So here we get to our practice problems. So practice one says for us to solve this answer, this inequality, and give our answer in interval notation. So I know in order for get x by itself, I'm going to have to divide by negative eight, which will give me negative um, three halves. But because I divided by a negative, this symbol does need to flip over. Okay. You don't throw in a bar if it didn't have one. You just reverse the symbol the way it's facing. Okay. And then for me, if I want to write the answer in interval notation, I actually have to graph this first. So if I graph this, there's my arrows for my infinities. Here's negative three halves. This is saying x is less than negative three halves. So that would be everything to the left of negative three halves. And because there's no bar, it is a parentheses here. I know in this direction, though, is negative infinity. So what would my interval look like? It will be from negative infinity on the left, and negative infinity will always have a parentheses, all the way to negative three halves with another parentheses. Now for number two, we're gonna solve this one. So I'm going to minus seven X on both sides. Um, I'm gonna get negative three X plus nine, less than or equal to three. Then I'm gonna minus nine on both sides. Um, I get negative three X is less than or equal to negative six. I'm gonna divide by negative three. And what that's gonna do is I am gonna have to switch the way this is facing and I do get a positive two. Why do I have to switch it? Because I am dividing by a negative, okay? And so then if I draw that, here's two, there's positive infinity, there's negative infinity, X is greater than or equal to two. Greater means I'd be numbers over here and I would need a bracket because I do have a bar and this does go to positive infinity. So the interval will be from two to infinity. Infinity always has a parentheses and this two has a bracket. Let's go ahead. We have um, three more problems. So number three wants us to solve this. The first thing I would do is just um, distribute this negative. Now I'm not multiplying a negative that I'm throwing in. I'm just simplifying what was already there. So that will become plus four. Then I will minus four on all three pieces. So this will give me negative five. That's gone, negative X and nine. Then I will divide by the negative one coefficient to all three parts. This will give me six X and negative nine, but because I divided, I am gonna have to flip these over. So it's gonna go in this direction now. Now I mentioned to you that they should always be less than when you have this double inequality. So it does have to be this way, okay? It has to, you cannot write it the other way. It does not make sense to mathematicians, but the smaller number should be going on this side and the larger number should be going on that side, okay? Now this is an equivalent statement of that one, 
okay? And if I graph that, here's negative nine, here's six, I am in between. There's a bracket on negative nine and a bracket on six. So my interval will be bracket negative nine, six, and a bracket. Now let's go ahead and try the inequalities with the absolute values. So if it's a less than, remember you're supposed to take x minus 18 less than negative 12, but then you're also supposed to, well, that don't even make any sense. That's no solution. And I'll explain why. This has no solution. Why does it have no solution? Because I know that the absolute value is always gonna come out as a positive number. Can a positive number be less than a negative number? No, positive numbers are always bigger than negative numbers, okay? So since this cannot happen, that's why there's no solution. And if they ask you for the interval, you're basically going to put this symbol. That means there's no interval. I can't give you an interval because there's no solutions, okay? Um, some people also see this it's called the empty set so it's got the braces but nothing on the inside because nothing is an answer now this one is a positive so this one i should be able to do okay so according to the rule it says i'm supposed to take the inside and use the symbols exactly the way they are then take the inside again but i'm going to change and change so this is going to go in the other direction and it's going to turn to negative eight and i'm going to solve both of these together and I'm going to um, put the word or in between. So here I'm going to minus two. I'm gonna divide by five, negative five. So this is gonna flip over and I get X negative six fifths. Here I'm gonna minus two. I'm gonna divide by negative five. I get x and two, but because I divided by a negative, this does have to flip over. So when I graph it, remember it's an or, that means both answers together. Here's negative six fifths and here's two. So x is less than negative six, which means it would go in this direction. And x is greater than two, which means it would go in that direction. They both have bars. So this will have a bracket and a bracket. And so if I write the answer in interval, it's going to be from negative infinity with the parentheses, of course, negative six fifths and a bracket. Then to tell the reader that this is also part of the answer, there's two parts to my answer. I have to use that union symbol. And then two to infinity and infinity always gets a parentheses, okay? So that is the end of this section. I highly recommend that you go into that homework assignment after watching this video and trying to attempt those um, problems. If you get stuck on anything, you can either ask the tutors of Math World to help you. You can text me, um, sign up for a Zoom session, and I can help you as well, okay? But that is the end of 1.7.